So my name is Alice Aspinall, and I will be reading my children's book, Everyone Can Learn Math. Here we go. Amy sits at her table with her fists clenched and her face overcome with distress. Her mom tells her again, Amy, take a deep breath and let's think about the problem one more time. You go to the store and buy three packages with eight candies in each. You want to share them equally among six people. How many candies should each person get? I don't know, Amy yells, holding back tears. She has been working on this math assignment for three nights and it is due tomorrow. Every night ends the same way. Amy bangs her notebook against the table and insists as she does every time she tries her math questions, I can't do math. Everyone at school gets the answers faster than I do. When the teacher calls on me, I always have to use my fingers to get the answer. Amy's mom is frustrated. As a little girl, she had the same struggles with math as Amy. She has been trying to help Amy with this assignment to show her that math can be different for her. Amy, it doesn't matter how long it takes you to get the answer. Work through it carefully and stick with the problem, she says desperately. I'll never get it. There's no point in trying. I'm just not a math person. Amy runs to her bedroom and slams her door shut. Later that evening, Amy is dancing at her ballet class. Mr. Stanley exclaims, Bravo, you have finally done an arabesque. Amy beams, beams with pride. I have been practicing getting my legs straight for two weeks. Your persistence has paid off. I knew you could get it if you kept trying. Mr. Stanley pats her on the back. Amy can't help but think of her fight with her mom about her math assignment. The next day at recess, Amy is playing with her friend Jonathan. He hollers at her across the playground, Hey, watch this! Then he makes his way across the entire set of monkey bars, slowly and with a lot of struggle. He never stops. Finally, he pants. See that? I've been trying to make it across these bars every recess since the beginning of the school year. Wow, Amy exclaims. That's really hard on my arms. How did you do it? Your muscles grow, Amy. The harder you work them, the bigger they get and the more they can handle. I just kept trying, so my muscles must be strong enough now. Amy thinks about her math assignment again. My brain is like a muscle too, she thinks. Later that day in gym class, Amy's class is working on their free throws. She notices Miles is sinking every shot he takes and she says in amazement, You are so talented, Miles. I wish I was that good. Miles stops and looks at her with a puzzled face. Amy, he says seriously, this is not talent. When I tried out for the basketball team this year, I didn't even make the cut, but I didn't let that stop me. I am determined to make the team next year, so I have been practicing my throws every night after school. Amy is baffled. Wait a second, you didn't make the team and now you're making every basket? How is that possible? She asks quietly. Everyone is able to get better at something if they try really hard. Miles shrugs and winks as he sinks another basket. After lunch, Amy sits at her desk with her head bowed down and her shoulders slumped. Mrs. Garcia approaches her to collect the math assignment. Amy is embarrassed and tells her teacher, I didn't do the assignment. Why not? asks Mrs. Garcia with disappointment in her voice. I'm not good at math. Every time I tried the questions, I got stuck and then I got frustrated, so I just didn't do them, Amy whispers. Amy, you are going to find that a lot of things in life are difficult and take a lot of work and practice. Does that mean you're going to quit every time? Her teacher questions. Suddenly, Amy realizes that math is just like everything else in her life. At first, she couldn't do an arabesque, 
but after practicing a lot, she was able to straighten her leg in the right way. Jonathan couldn't get across the monkey bars without falling, but after building his muscles, he can now make it across even though he struggles. Miles didn't even make the basketball team, but he was determined to get better. Now he can sink all his free throws. If hard work and practice could work for these things, why couldn't they work for math? Amy asks Mrs. Garcia, could I please try the math assignment one more time and hand it in tomorrow? Mrs. Garcia smiles, only if you promise to work through the problems when you get stuck. Try using a different method when you are frustrated. Instead of thinking of the candies as one large group, try working with the three groups you have in the beginning. Amy nods. She is thankful that her teacher believes in her even when she has given up on herself. After dinner, Amy sits at the kitchen table with her math assignment one more time. Her mom is shocked. Are you trying those questions again? Of course, mom. How will I ever get better at math if I don't keep working at it? My brain is like a muscle, you know, and I need to make it grow. Amy beams from ear to ear. Now, if I buy three packages and need to split them among six people, I need to figure out how to make three groups turn into six groups. Maybe each person should get half a package. Great strategy, but how many candies are in half a package? Her mom asks slowly. Amy counts on her fingers carefully. If there are eight candies in a package, then half would be four. Each person gets four candies. Amy can't believe she did it. Mrs. Garcia was right. If I, I just needed to think of the problem in a different way. Her mom sighs in relief and replies, you can learn math after all. The end. Thanks for listening to my story. 